<laughs> Greetings. Hey, it's Susie Q. <laughs> How the heck are you? What's showing up in your field? What's lighting you up? And what is illuminating the miracles in your beautiful, beautiful, beautiful life? Um, today, we're going to talk about quantum healing hypnosis technique. And I'm a level two practitioner. So quantum healing hypnosis technique came to me back in a dream state in 2015. And what was so exciting was that I had the the words Dolores Cannon. And it wasn't a vision or anything. It just was Dolores Cannon. And so the next morning I woke up, I remembered the name and I went to my computer and looked her up. And sure enough, she is the founder of Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And then I learned that she had passed away in 2014. So I know that I've got some beautiful um, presence of energies with Dolores Cannon's work and with uh, her embodiment of all of her wisdom that she's brought forth for so many people. So, so this is what happened was, this is so silly. When I first started, you know, kind of looking at Dolores Cannon back in 2015, I think I signed up for a QHHT uh, class, but I never finished it. So last year in 2021, I went ahead, I think it was the summer of 2021, I went ahead and signed up for level one, and then I went into level two immediately. And so it's been super fun doing this work and just really acknowledging the wisdom and the intelligence that Dolores Cannon created um, for us to be able to teach others and for us to learn how we can do the same kind of techniques uh, that Dolores Cannon did. I can't say that I'm exactly like her necessarily, but I do my very, very best uh, to follow the protocols and follow the structure of our sessions. So this is going to be so fun. I just had a session on Sunday. It was super awesome. And I love um, having sessions with people. So when we first look at a person that's calling or coming in for a quantum healing hypnosis technique session is there's several levels of consciousness just to be prepared for uh, this meeting and for this uh, session. The sessions are around five or six or seven hours. Um, so it's a very long session. I can tell you with the duration of time that we do with the quantum healing hypnosis technique energies is that it's almost like the, the time gets really condensed. So it doesn't feel like it's been all day long or four or five or six or, you know, seven hours. It doesn't seem that way, but we do, we sure do come out feeling really hungry after we come out of the session. So that's kind of fun. But when we really look at it, is that we might ask if a person contacts me about the quantum healing hypnosis technique, we kind of keep it really kind of simple because a lot of this energy through the QHHT energies is that it's really about healing, helping a person heal thyself, heal thyself. And as a facilitator, which would be me as the practitioner, is that I'm facilitating this person to really say and be uh, exactly who they are and what they're seeking in their life. And so I just... I continue to lean into these folks that come in for sessions. It's been really amazing. So for an example, if, you, if somebody calls me for an appointment for that, I might say, um, I might give them my directions. I might give them a few things. I might send them a few texts before they come in. But I always ask them to write down um, kind of the stories of your life or, you know, like your relationships, your, your original family that you came from. Um, write down details. Ask questions. And, you know, even for me, I'm like so curious. And I'm like going, you can ask any question. There will be absolutely no judgment. It's just completely a free zone to just say who and what you are and what you're seeking. It's very, very powerful. People come in and they don't come, sometimes people come in with no notes. And so I'm like, okay, <laughs> I can work with that still. But a lot of people, I love it when they come in and they have notes and things that they're really um, curious about. Because I really want to, as a facilitator, I want to initiate a conversation once they're in uh, their meditative state. So it's very, very powerful. Even when I had my first session with a QHHT practitioner, I spent hours doing it. And I did a holographic version, front and back of my body, going back to the time, the, the earliest a time where I noticed things in my body that were a little bit different and off. And I would diagram it on my, um, on my, 
holographic uh, version. So it was pretty interesting. So those practitioners, when you when you give them all the details, those practitioners will go through it for you while you're in your hypnosis uh, your hypnosis session. So those are really important things. You can ask anything. Again, literally, there is no judgment, right? So we work here on the uh, the earthly school. We work in other higher realms. We might work in spirit. We might, we might even work with just pure energy, right? So everything, it's a free, free form kind of uh, feeling that we're going to find the right solutions for you. So when you first come in, um, it's going to be about a two or two, you know, my one on Sunday was almost three hours, but it was like like a two hour session for an interview. And that was when a person can say whatever they want to say. They can say everything. And I have some guidelines or some things that they might, you know, kind of take a look at. But then everything that they're talking about is I'm actively listening. I'm not taking any notes. I'm actively listening, maybe asking a couple of questions, but I'm letting the person say what they want to say. Dolores Cannon always used to say, the itch in my nose, um, she always used to say, um, if you let them talk a little bit more and go a little bit longer on the interview, their healing begins already. It already begins just for a person to say something and not, not have a counter opinion, you know, like, have you ever thought about doing this? Or, you know, why did you do that? You know, there's none of that. It's just active listening and completely awareness. And so I'm getting a lot of sensations on my body. So I'm guessing Dolores Cannon might be here. <laughs> Cause it's, she's kind of amazing, right? So we do that about two and a half, two and a half, uh, two or two and a half hours. It could go into three hours if a person really needs to share, then I'm actively listening, okay? The next time we, uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll go into where the day bed is here. And then uh, we'll do an induction and get a person really comfortable and cozy, right? And, and then we start doing these sessions. And so with the sessions, we might start off with seeing different things, seeing any impressions that they have or any things that they're hearing or understanding, just impressions impressions and then we move into possibly some past lives or future lives right so it's really really interesting so we have two hours to be in the hypnotic um, state uh, and it's only two hours that we can have a person in that uh, sense of being right on the day bed so it's two hours total uh, for the hypnosis part and so what I sometimes you know we have so many things to do it seems like that two hours is going to be perfect timing for everybody but we really want to as a you know, as a practitioner I want to be sure that I can get most of their questions answered and sometimes at the very end when it's kind of getting close to that two hour mark I'm just like well, I'm really talking super fast. So for about maybe for the first part of the hypnosis session, it will be maybe past lives or future lives. And the, and the past life could be even in this lifetime now. Of course, we get things from maybe, you know, like 400 AD going into uh, the future of 4,994. That was probably the furthest one uh, into the future that we've gone to, um, is that we have the ability to just really allow the folks to come in and be in whatever consciousness that they decide to go into. And for me as a practitioner, I do the very best to ask questions, <laughs> especially if it's a past life. Sometimes, sometimes the past life stuff shows up and gets so stunning. I'm kind of like, it, it, I can't really kind of, I can't really understand the, how wonderful this experience is. And I, I can't find the words, but eventually I'll kind of lean in a little bit more, a little bit more, then we can get more guidance that will help the person today. So all we're doing with these past lives and future lives, they're all great, right? But we want to help the person now in their present moment of awareness. So whatever we're looking at, we're looking at guidance to help the person now. People like the stories and like to, you know, talk and talk about past lives and future lives. And that's cool as long as you're bringing it into your consciousness now, right? It's <laughs> super fun. And then... After that, we'll, we'll go through a little bit of those other lives, right, or other impressions, and then we start working with the subconscious. So the subconscious is a great uh, piece there, and it has a kind of a different feeling tone than the past lives, right, is that we can really start working with that subconscious with asking asking the subconscious the questions that our um, clients have, have brought to us. And I want to go back just for a second about those past lives or future lives. I want to go back to that just for a moment. But with the past lives or future lives, some folks, some folks, 
um, are, might be experiencing what is called somnambulistic. We go through these different brain waves to go into these states of awareness. And somnambulistic is something that Dolores Cannon is really, was really uh, exploring deeply, right? And so even with some of my sessions, some of my folks are going into that brain wave or that different wave of energy called somnambulist, nam, somnambulistic. It took me a long time how to pronounce it. Um, but it's called somnambulistic, and that means that the person who is on the daybed in a hypnosis session is taking on the personality and the qualities of the other uh, life that they are receiving at that moment. It's very, very fascinating. You, maybe you have a person that's in their 60s and they're talking like a six-year-old, maybe for a full hour, right? Or all these other kinds of really neat things. So the somnambulistic quality is very, very rich and has so many more kind of feelings feelings of, you know, just kind of like kind of walk in the path. It's like they're like walking through it and actually exemplifying all of those qualities from that somnambulistic nature. All right. So we're going to move back into the subconscious real quick. The subconscious is really where a lot of things are stored within our beautiful breath of life, right? And so a lot of times beliefs are programming or conditioning or vows or promises or all these other kinds of states of consciousness that kind of block us from our true divinity, our true sovereign self, is that we start noticing that we start getting closing, 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 closing doors because so many things are imposed. Now, when we came in as beautiful light beings, we didn't have that. But over the years, right, we start getting we get and told what to do. <laughs> so, but, so with that subconscious, that subconscious is, is always there to assist in kind of clearing or wiping out some things that are no longer needed. Maybe sometimes they were part of our consciousness, but through that subconscious, we can go, I just talk directly. It's like, even if when I'm working with the subconscious and the person's on the daybed in a hypnosis session, I'm just asking them like a friend, hey, subconscious, can you, what do you think about this? And subconscious, can you clear that? Subconscious, um, what do you think about this healing journey? Subconscious, can you do a body scan? Subconscious, can you uh, remove some threads of energies around the ancestral lineage? So there's all kinds of things that we can go into with the subconscious. And so I kind of honor it. I think the subconscious is kind of like one of my BFFs. You know, whoever subconscious it is, it's kind of like the same being. It's kind of that same state of awareness that it's kind of like one being that I think maybe we all come from the one, right? So it's really, really fun. And so after that, it's about two hour session, then we take them out of the um, hypnotic state. And then we start moving into getting them to come back, you know, come back to uh, awareness, right? And then after that, it's super amazing. Some people might want to lay on the day bed for a little bit. Some people feel like they're paralyzed when they're in the <laughs> Um, they're like, I'm still here, Susie. I'm still here. But they're like, can you move your body? No, that's okay. <laughs> people are like, I'm not hypnotized, but can you move your body? No. So it's really interesting the way people perceive what is hypnosis or what is a meditative state. Anyway, so I think that's it for today. It's been super fun sharing at this level. And um, I'd be happy to give a session. Um, and I'd be happy to be part of your healing journey or actually be a witnesser of your own healing journey, right? Because it's, it's an inside job, right? So when we really look at how we can heal thyself, we can find other modalities and other ways and techniques and learn from one another. Every time I do these sessions, I learn something new. I almost want to take notes, but then I, Dolores Cannon says, don't take notes during the interview, but I'm like, I want to like kind of make some notes because people are teaching me. So this is a beautiful exchange of energies and a beautiful exchange of the capacity to love not only our own self, but love one another. <laughs> so if you would like to have a session, you can call me at 832-790-7888. And I'd be happy to explore with you your beautiful divinity across all time and all space. <laughs> so have a great day and namaste. <laughs>